Thank you. Um, the title has changed slightly. Um, I think uh, for all the battery st uh, energy storage technologies, I'm going to focus on what I'm good at. So um, my family history, my dad works as a civil engineer who built um, dams for hydroelectricity, pumped hydroelectricity. So I'm continuing the family history uh, to work on energy storage. Um, so as a trained material scientist and a chemist, uh, when I give talks to general public like uh, you, uh, I always uh, want to set a agenda first. So there are three take-home messages uh, for my talk, even though it's only 10 minutes. So if you don't remember anything I say, please remember the three bullet points. So the first one has something to do with thermodynamics first law. The first message is that energy uh, storage technologies, they are not renewable energy technologies per se. Energy storage is an enabling technology. First law of thermodynamics says that energy is conserved. So my job is to very efficiently transform energy from one form to another form, preferably from electricity to chemical energy, and then reverse the direction from chemical energy to electricity at above 90% efficiency. And that's what batteries can do. So for battery people, just like not all the cars are the same, not all the batteries are the same, trust me. The chemistry are different, the designs are different. So the first batteries, everybody here have one or two or several, if you have all the eyes, iPhone, iPad. Um, anyway, so most of you don't realize that uh, since the first uh, commercialization of lithium-ion batteries in 1992 by Sony corporations. Uh, in the past two decades, we have successfully uh, tripled energy density in a fixed volume of cell. You don't realize it because your mobile device performs much more function than 1992. Uh, we have reached to the point where the energy density is enough to sustain, say, your iPad for the entire working day without recharging it. So what's next for us is that the mobile devices are going to perform multiple functions, like serving the web while you're making phone calls, and even uh, for companies like Qualcomm, they're looking at possibilities of using handheld devices for health monitoring. So the requirement for the batteries still ongoing, but in this perspective, I think the battery expert, we think we did a reasonably good job, okay? The second category of the uh, batteries are so-called high power batteries, where the new applications are emerging, okay? So in the past few years, almost all the handheld power tools have uh, the nickel metal hydride batteries have been replaced and the lithium ion batteries is being used. And I have seen many um, Nissan Leaf on campus in the local region of Nissan, uh, of uh, San Diego. So I'm going to focus my main talk on the electric uh, cars, the batteries, energy storage. And the last one, both Carlos and uh, Byron uh, will agree with me that the uh, holy grail for energy storage is the uh, storage for renewable energy source. So there is a very beautiful article did um, in uh, Science Magazine last year. Uh, you can actually look at all the uh, electrochemical way of storing energy versus the traditional way of pumped hydro and compressed air. So there is no doubt in terms of the cost uh, these uh, energy storage, bulk energy uh, storage is still the top choices. However, uh, these techniques, they cannot respond very quickly. So if you look at Carlos' videos, right, the solar energy output fluctuates so much. Pump hydro and compressed air, they need more time to respond to the energy demand. However, the uh, Electrochemical energy storage is more um, suitable for this type of application. So 
chemistry. Okay, we since uh, I'm here to give this uh, talk, so at least uh, we should know how batteries function, especially the new generation lithium ion batteries. It's very simple. Okay, you have two what we call the layered materials. They are different chemistries. The lithium ion has very different chemical potential in these two different materials. And lithium is a very special element where you can find the two different materials that have four electron volt difference in chemical energy. That's why lithium ion battery, a single cell, can power your electronic devices because one cell gives more than four volt batteries. Okay? So this is one, the operating principle, and this process is 90, in our lab, we can achieve 99% reversibility. Actually, in industry, they can do 99.9. .9. Think about it. If you want uh, 10,000 cycles, after 10,000 cycles, still half of the capacity or energy density are left, you need 99.9% .9 efficiency. So that's the second message of today's talk, is that why battery is so efficient? Because no combustion. We're not limited by Carnot. Okay, so that's the reason we can achieve 99.9 .9 efficiency. And the chemistry is so rich. The one I showed, the layered compounds, are the ones that are commercialized in your cell phone. The one showed here, called the Spinel, is commercialized in Nissan Leaf. That's what I'm telling you. The chemistry are completely different in the cars compared to in your cell phone. And we have many more other candidates, okay? So for the car application, the DOE roadmap shows clearly that lithium ion battery is the one that hit that star for the PHEV 40 miles. So it's the Chevy Volt target. And the EV goal here, okay? We're not far from this one, however, this plot is uh, a little bit deceiving because we plotted it in logarithm scale. <laughs> so it, in fact, if we can improve two to three times more energy density for lithium ion or whatever other chemistry, we will be able to hit the EV target set by the Department of Energy. But this two to three times is not that easy to do, okay? Um, even for PHEV, we have the problem with the cost safety and the cycle life. Uh, your cell phone, you, most of us change every three years. Uh, if I ask you to change your car battery, which is you know, $15,000 per battery every three years, I don't think anyone will buy the electric cars. So we need to meet the at least 10 year cycle life. Okay? So uh, I think I'm going to leave the microgrid details to Byron. Uh, I just want to say that uh, on the real-time market, batteries can be uh, revenue-generating devices because the fluctuation, the mismatch between the supply and demand on the, on the actual day, on the real-time, can be very big. So if lithium-ion battery or any electrochemistry uh, energy storage technology are going to make an impact, it's here. Okay, so as a scientist, my job is to push forward the cycle life, the safety, and possibly the energy density. And how do we achieve that? So thanks to the uh, you know, administration at the national level and also on this campus level, uh, my lab focuses a lot on understanding how materials function. So I'm not going to go inside the details to talk about all the spectroscopy, microscopy, diffraction methods. Uh, I think most of you will um, not appreciate it, but uh, if you want information, you can go to this uh, uh, Center for Chemical Energy Storage to find more information. It's a northeastern center, but uh, uh, our campus and the Berkeley are the representat re representatives for the West Coast for this chemical energy storage center. And the second one, second uh, very important uh, uh, method is that we are utilizing computational power to help us to accelerate materials design. So computation can now calculate a lot of properties before you make the materials. So let me show you the example, okay? So this is 
of all known chemical compounds, all of them have been calculated in terms of voltage and energy density capacity. And you can select what are the suitable ones for your application. The challenge here is that what about unknown materials, materials that have never been made? So in, com in combination between the computation and the experiment, we are on our pathway to discover more new materials to enable the uh, in improvement in the energy storage. So my last message uh, is really, I showed some top research direction, and I think uh, I will take this opportunity to vent my frustration about this. All the battery chemistries are invented in the United States. Nowadays, they all, I mean, most of them are manufactured overseas. So uh, I'm, uh, as you can see, immigrant as well. So however, um, I do think if I are nurturing the PhD or undergraduate students in this area, they should be able to find jobs in here, right? So uh, we still have a lot of more things we can do to improve the energy storage uh, technology. So the third um, take home message here is that there are a lot of unexplored chemistries. People talk about the limitation of lithium reserve. We have other chemistry like sodium ion batteries that work very, very well in the laboratory skills. So there are a lot more to explore. And I really, truly believe that energy storage uh, is there for the sustainable future. And because lithium ion is a positive ion, we tend to attract a lot of negative stuff, negative <laughs> opinions, especially in the media. But I hope today my speech will um, change your opinion about that. Thanks.